Welcome! The concept that we're going to be examining next in NUR 200 is the concept of metabolism. The purpose of this video is to provide an overview of this concept as well as an introduction to the exemplars that we'll cover more deeply in class. So let's get started. The exemplars we're going to look at in class are actually kind of varied. Uh, we're going to look at gastric surgery after having had obesity as a concept or an exemplar in NUR 180. We're going to follow through with the gastric surgery. We're also going to do some endocrine disorders. We're going to look at thyroid and adrenal disorders. And finally, osteoporosis, which is a metabolic bone disorder. This lends itself very well to mobility, which is going to be the next concept that we cover. So, metabolism defined as per the text, the processes of biochemical reactions occurring in the body cells that are necessary to produce energy repair cells and maintain life. So if you go back to anatomy and physiology and you look at the cells, the Krebs cycle, you can look at this neat little drawing with all the colors and see that it's all kinds of stuff like fructose 6P and asparaginine and methionine and cysteine. It's all different cell processes that are driving our motor as per se. So metabolism, if you're a car, think of metabolism as the engine. So what that's all about, it can be the endocrine system. Primarily it's your endocrine system and it's about hormones. Hormones cover growth and protein metabolism, reproduction, fluid and electrolyte management, and gender differentiation, to name a few. Other than that, it's also based upon uh, caloric intake and how active you are. So we did not look at the posterior pituitary last week, but at the beginning of the course, we looked at DI and SIADH. Both of them are related to antidiuretic hormone, which is secreted from the posterior pituitary. This week, we're going to look at thyroid and adrenals, indirectly the parathyroid and indirectly the pancreas. Now, the thyroid and adrenals both have stimulation from the anterior pituitary, just to kind of give you an idea. And you should be familiar with that relationship of what stimulates the thyroid and what stimulates the adrenals to release their hormones. You know I love my concept connection. So, at minimum, metabolism is closely tied in with the idea of perfusion, mobility, certainly nutrition. You got to feed the motor with gasoline, otherwise it's not going to run. Immunity and infection, cellular regulation, fluid and electrolyte, thermoregulation, tissue integrity, oxygenation, sexuality, stress, and coping. Because you know, cortisol is the stress hormone. And we'll talk all about that soon. Lifespan considerations. You certainly know that weight gain and weight loss are looked at completely different depending on what age you're at. When you're younger, it's much easier to gain and lose weight because your metabolism is more active. It's running a little bit faster and you'll tend to gain and lose weight at a much faster rate. Sexual maturation, once again, that is a lifespan consideration. Uh, we talked a little bit about the onset of menses and the cessation of menses, which are both related to hormonal changes in the body. We talked a little bit about the effects of estrogen. Estrogen is going to come to play again when we talk about osteoporosis. So we looked at estrogen as it relates to cardiovascular disease and how it relates to breast cancer. Next, we're going to look at how it relates to your bones. Some of the age-related changes that happen with metabolism, certainly the older you get, the harder it is to lose weight. Um, the older you get, you can look at the food the wrong way and put on five pounds. So those of you that are young and don't seem to have a problem, just to let you know, it will happen, right? So stay active and avoid those age-related changes. Much like everything else, metabolic alterations often come into too much metabolism or too little. So you can look at, for example, thyroid. That's an easy one. Too much thyroid hormone, too little. Osteoporosis is an over-metabolism in the bones, so you have constant remodeling, and it's breaking down faster than it's building up. So once again, 
metabolic alterations. Too little as it relates to gastric surgery, your metabolism slows down, you're not burning fuel as efficiently. So what's the big deal with metabolism? Well, it is a big deal. Especially in America, there is a high prevalence of metabolic disorders. We talk um, in cardiac or in perfusion about metabolic syndrome. And I said that's the constellation of symptoms that includes abdominal fat and hypertension and hyperlipidemia and, oh, can't remember the other ones, right, the second, insulin resistance. These are a common finding in many uh, middle-aged Americans, and it points to an increased risk in cardiovascular disease. Certainly, genetics play a lot into it and the non-modifiable risk factors. And then the other big deal is assessment and diagnosis. There's a lot of public health out there on screening for some of these metabolic disorders, especially diabetes. First exemplar we're going to cover is gastric surgery. It, the overarching exemplar is obesity, which like you, you covered in NUR 180. Now we're going to look at the surgical treatment of obese, for obesity, which is gastric surgery. And we're going to look at specifically bariatric surgery. So the things that you're going to need to think about, and you should prepare for class, is what types of bariatric surgery there are. As then, we need to think about what are the short-term complications of having bariatric surgery and the long-term complications, as well as what is it going to take to prepare a patient for the changes that are going to need to happen as they go into post-operative period with gastric surgery. So be prepared for that. Dumping syndrome is something that relates to gastric surgery, and it's one of the long-term risks or complications. So your job, should you choose to accept it, is to determine what is dumping syndrome, what does it have, what makes it happen, or why does it happen, and what do you need to do about it. So I'm going to put that on you in preparation for Monday, since dumping syndrome is a major complication for patients post-gastric surgery, you should prepare by looking at this and thinking about what you can do to prevent the occurrence of dumping syndrome. Thyroid disorders. I always like to start at the beginning, and the beginning is that the thyroid gland secretes three hormones. If you don't know them, you should because I want you to know which three hormones are secreted by the thyroid. And then what is the action of said hormones? If you know what they do normally, then if you have too much, i.e. Tigger over here on the right, then that's going to mean one thing. If you have too little thyroid hormone, like poor little Eeyore over here, you're going to have a different problem. So think about the physical effects of having too much or too little thyroid hormone, and it goes back to the action of said hormones. Then we have your adrenals, and the adrenals are a little bit more complicated because there's the adrenal medulla and the adrenal cortex. And uh, up on top, you'll see that I have a picture of a dog wearing a spidey spider costume. It's the creepy mutant spider dog. And it is a video that was going around a while back around Halloween in like Eastern Europe. Some poor, some guy dressed up as dog like this. And imagine you're in a dark hallway and this thing comes running at you, okay? Chances are your adrenal medulla is going to start firing on all cylinders and you're going to have a fight or flight response and that's what the adrenal medulla is about. The adrenal cortex, sugar, salt, and sex hormones. I didn't put the sex hormones in there, but they're there as well. So you're dealing with sugar, salt, sex hormones. With the adrenal, adrenal medulla, one of your hormones is cortisol. And if you've ever happened to watch some of those TV commercials, we know that cortisol is the reason why we all have belly fat. According to the commercials, if we take this medicine that they will be happy to send to us for a credit card number, we can take care of all of our problems. So cortisol is released with stress, and it causes very specific physiologic functions. And as you can see, they're listed here on the slide. Regulating glucose, increasing fat, defense against infection, stress response. All of these things that we deal with are relate, you know, increase our stress level, which are going to increase our cortisol levels. 
Then we have aldosterone. Aldosterone is the end result of my favorite, favorite, favorite system in the whole world. It's the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. And it's the end result. And so aldosterone's job is to maintain blood pressure through retention of sodium in water. Prior to aldosterone release, we have angiotensin II, which also vasoconstricts. But aldosterone, which is secreted by the adrenal cortex, is going to cause sodium and water retention therefore increasing a blood pressure. So, reason it out. Too much cortisol and aldosterone is called Cushing syndrome. If knowing what you know about what these hormones do, what is having too much of them going to look like? And what are the fluid and electrolyte effects that are going to occur because of it? Having too little cortisol and aldosterone, call it Addison's, once again, go back to what they do normally and then take them away so that you can see what's going to be happening signs and symptoms wise, fluid electrolyte wise. And once again, with not enough cortisol and aldosterone, you have to think about your long-term stress response because that's what cortisol and aldosterone do is they keep you stable for the long haul. Epinephrine and norepinephrine are only going to get you out of an emergent situation, but to stay ma maintain energy levels, you got to think about cortisol and aldosterone. This is what I call drive-by. Drive-by is when I literally just drive by a slide. Something called pheochromocytoma. It is a tumor of the adrenal medulla, and it causes an excessive secretion of epinephrine and norepinephrine. Okay, this is going to jack you up beyond any point that's considered normal. So somebody with a pheochromocytoma needs surgery. It is an emergency. And they're going to have palpitations, severe headache, episodic sweating, massively elevated blood pressure, like 300 over 200. It, it needs to be addressed. And that's all I'm going to say about pheochromocytoma. The way you fix it is you take the tumor out. Final exemplar is osteoporosis. And a lot of people want to think about that as mobility, but really it's about the metabolism of the bone and how the bone gets torn apart and rebuilds, and what happens with osteoporosis. Okay. There are specific risk factors that you need to consider, and also it's fairly straightforward, but the complications, because one of the complications is a fractured hip, which we're going to cover next in mobility. So that's kind of how it all kind of plays together. This concludes your PowerPoint for metabolism. What I would like you to do is to complete the worksheet on normal physiology that is posted prior to coming to class. I really would like you to do this independently rather than coming to class and having me provide you with the answers. It's going to be my expectation for this week. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in class.